Hi, everybody. Welcome Hello. to the Black Belt Folding Session. Today, we're going to do a marathon tackling de novo. Um, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a fantastic day. There's so much information here. There's so much that we're going to get, so much that everyone's going to learn. Just in the test sessions, I've seen at least three or four different things that just made me have my mouth open. Now, I'm going to introduce who we have here today. Some people don't have webcams. Um, we, we've had some technical issues and apologize for that, but Google changed how they do hang -ups this, hangouts this week, and they've made a lot of hangups, whatever. We have here today GMN. We've got Maddie who does not have um, a webcam available to him. We have Tokens, who also doesn't have the webcam. And we have Catfish, who is live at the Seattle um, Theater. Catfish, you need to unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Okay, and without further ado, oh, oh, who's that? Oh, it looks like J-flat. Excellent. Without any anything, oh, oh, where is, where is, um, where is Brian? Oh, here we go. Excellent. We have people. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to mute the fair because um, it's a little loud there. And... We're going to tackle this series today in an interesting way. We're trying to break it up, and as we've gone along and done testing here, it doesn't break up quite so easily as we would have thought. But basically, our first session today is going to be, what do you do when you're given a puzzle that's a long straight line with some structures on it? other than just stare at it for a few minutes and want to bang your head on the desk. Okay, so most of us have gotten past that, new people it takes a while for, but we are going to learn today how to approach that. What's the first thing that you might look for? We have a wonderful slate of great folders today. The following sessions will be after you've decided what you want to do, how do you actually accomplish it? And, of course, the last session will be on the ideal design, uh, protein design paper um, by Baker Labs. Um, the first thing we are going to do, Maddie was not able, um, because of his internet speed, to be able to um, do a back and forth with a screen share. He has done a fantastic video, an excellent video, and I'm going to share that with you right now. Uh, there is no speaking, but he has done text boxes. So without any further ado, let's watch Maddie's video. And that's one of the glitches that we ran into today. You all can give me a moment. Let's see if I can start that again.
video down. Dean, the video is down again, I think. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's when you type. It kicks it off.
Thank you, and, and sorry for the delay, the problem there. We have run into some glitches. Maddie, if you could unmute yourself, um, we'll see if there are any initial questions from the veterans room. Excellent. Um, I am sorry. I, what I will do is put that entire video up completely by itself at the very end of session six so that if there was a problem um, in how that streamed that everyone will have a chance to see it. Now, are there any questions from the vet room? And actually, maybe what we should do is move right on along. And GMN, if you would like to unmute yourself. Were you gonna, and you're were on. You gonna have me or to, were you going to have me or tokens go? Um, Doesn't matter. Why don't you go on ahead? <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. um, just, just to break in, I, can I go no, first? I truly, I truly apologize. Yes, we'll have tokens go first. Then I, I really apologize. Um, we, we ran into this thing where Google changed what they did, their whole interface, in the middle of the week. This morning we ran into glitchy hangouts, glitchy broadcasts. I do apologize for that. Um, we did a lot of testing, but unfortunately. Every session has brought new issues. So, if you would like to go on ahead, then uh, tokens, please. Okay, thank you. Can you all hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good. So uh, here we are at the um, at the research puzzle, and uh, I guess there's going to be a bit of um, repetition compared to the video because I did things in a very similar way to what the video did. Uh, so the first thing I, I did was to look at the protein. Um, and uh, well, at the end of this protein where I'm pointing, um, I added, I connected these to make a longer sheet. Uh, so I can make four sheets that uh, combine together. Um, what I do then is to um, simply cut between each secondary structure like this and uh, well, well I cut between all the structures and uh, I rebuild the um, the helices. And this goes on for a little while until the helix comes together. I guess that's fine now. And uh, then I always tweak the helix to make it ideal. I like to have like uh, ideal helices and sheets and the sheets are already ideal from the beginning um, so you don't have to do anything with the sheets uh, only the helices need to be rebuilt so now this is ideal and I do this with the other, she other helix as well and uh, after a while I have rebuilt the helices and now I'm going to load a solution where this is where I've got, got all the sheets with cuts between them um, and the helices are built and I've just moved them together sort of uh, close together because I, I always do this in the beginning and then I uh, 
then I do a save because if I want to restart the puzzle, I found out that my structure wasn't good or something. Then, um, then I can uh, then I can go back to this point and start putting the protein together in a new way if I want to do that. So this is uh, the the start. This is I haven't really done anything here. I've just uh, this is just sort of start where you have to do all this every time you uh, you make you start a de novo puzzle. So let's see the next one. In the next one, I have put in the sheets together, um, and there are some choices how you put the sheets. Um, in the previous video, as he explained. Because uh, the two middle sheets has a lot of hydrophobics, it's it in this case seemed natural to put them together. Um, this is just with the move tool I have positioned the sheets together. Uh, so this is uh, with the sheets together, and I think what I uh, from the later. Um, um, From the in the later saves, I, I decided to actually make this sheet a bit longer because, uh, well, it seems like it it can, can without any problem just go down here and uh, and we get a longer sheet. And uh, I don't like loops. Uh, I try to. Get as small loops as possible and make as much as the of the protein as possible to, into a secondary structure. Um, so um, this is with the sheets, and now I want to move the helices. And uh, well, when you move the helices, first you have to check that the side of the helix there with the with the hydrophobics uh, it goes inwards towards the um, to watch the sheets and the hydrophilics, they uh, they go outside. So this helix should, could go down here. While you're moving that tokens, um, yeah. one small comment. I, I find it interesting when I'm doing a de novo. I sort of um, I, I, I saw you were lengthening a sheet. I I tend to shorten them slightly to give the loops as much room as possible to play around. And you may have said this already, but um, if you could open your behavior um, slider so that we can see which behavior you're using at your different steps. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so so in the beginning I just use full CI because, uh, <coughs> well, in the beginning I don't wiggle at all. You have to, you, you don't wiggle at all in the beginning uh, before you have positioned everything in the right place. Um, so this is so yeah so so now we are uh, positioning things and this, this is about where the helix goes because you can see that we have some hydrophobics here on the sheets and we want to cover those so they're not exposed. So I used the first helix for that. And the second helix can go over here in the middle of the sheets on the other side and uh, try to cover those. Um, and I've done that in index save. Let's see. Like this. Okay, so this is sort of actually the most important part of, of making it novel. It's deciding how to put the put the stuff together and put the secondary structures together. So uh, as you see, I have covered the hydrophobics with the helices. <coughs> and now we have to. Well, one other thing: when you are positioning these things, you have to make sure that the loops are long enough that. Uh, that you can um, you can get the you can uh, that 
this, I mean, we have a, quite a lot of loop here. We have a loop here, uh, and a loop here. And uh, these are long enough that they can go together if we rebuild this. So I, the next par part I, I will do is try to rebuild this loop and rebuild this loop so they get close to each other. And of course, if the loops are not long enough, you can't really put the secondary structures where you where you're going to if if the loops can't connect to each other. So you have to keep that in mind while you are putting the secondary structures that the loops are long enough to connect the the different structures. Uh, so <coughs> this is uh, this is the next step. You have to go to each. Uh, each cut point, and um, and you make bands between them, and then re you rebuild each loop so that they uh, fit together, and they get relatively close to each other. And uh, you might look a bit of uh, at the side chains while you're doing this uh, to make sure that the loops look nice. Uh, and and the side chains have room. So I've done this. Uh, let's see. This is the next save. I've rebuilt all the loops, and I have bands between them. And now we need to uh, stabilize. And tokens, you always use the um, the bands to close. No, I don't use bands to close. Actually, I, I just use bands in the beginning, just to get them relatively close to each other. Thank but you. What, let, let me explain what I, I do. I, I remove this enable cut bands yes. because if you ha have cut bands turned out on now, this is the first time we're going to wiggle. If you have cut bands on, then uh, well, the, the the protein will be disintegrated actually. Uh, because the cut bands are so strong that they will just pull everything apart. So the first time I wiggle, I, ha I don't have cut bands enabled. And uh, I like to keep my structures ideal. And uh, the way to make sure that they don't get bent or anything like that is to freeze each secondary structure. So I freeze all the secondary structures. And I think I have shaken this, so I'm ready to wiggle for the first time. So let's try to do that. Well, I don't know if this is this is this wasn't how I wiggled beforehand. You can see that some of the sheets are coming apart. That's this because is, it's never going to work quite the way you had it all set up. We're, we're, we're hitting every fold at Murphy's Law today that is humanly possible. But that's okay. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. I probably did something to, to prevent the sheets from coming apart. Usually you don't need to... Uh, if, if, if the sheets are coming apart, of course you can uh, start adding bands between the sheets like this. I well, I have another save, so no matter what I do now, it, it's going to be all right because I can just load the next save. Uh, so this sheet was coming apart, so let me just, as a quick fix, add some bands here and uh, let's try to wiggle look, wiggle again. Well, this looks all right. Um, one thing that you might think about when you're putting the protein together is that these 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 are sheets when they let me remove the side chains um, when they uh, go together they are anti-parallel, 
and this is the nicest way to align sheets. And you can see you get these um, every second segment you get two hydrogen bonds to the uh, to the next segment. These sec these uh, sheets are not as nicely put together because they are parallel. And uh, parallel uh, sheets don't make as nice hydrogen bonds. Uh, actually, in this case, um, at the moment we are missing some bonds, so there should be an all, some some extra bonds between these two sheets that we are missing. Uh, and hope of, and you should keep that in mind and try to make sure that you get as many hydrogen bonds as possible later. Um, Excellent tokens. Is that pretty much um, what you wanted to show about um, the initial, what you're looking at? Uh, I just <laughs> wanted to... Here that I hadn't ever really thought about much before, so go ahead. Uh, the, the only thing I, I wanted to say is how I closed the, uh, the cut, cut bands. Please. Let's see. Uh, let's see the next one. I, I think I've did, did a, done a bit of wiggle and shake here. Oh no, I have actually. Let me go back to the previous one. Okay. Um, so, actually, what I do when I want to close the cut bands is that I, I still keep the secondary structures frozen, but um, I add. Like this, on every second of structure, I add ba bands, and uh, usually on the sheets, I add one at, one at each end and one in the middle, and I try to make them zero length bands. I mean, just approximately. So uh, you, don't, you don't actually use the script zero length bands. I have done that earlier, but the zero length band scripts also uh, add bands to the loops. And the, I want the loops to be free to move around. Uh, so if you use the zero length band script, you have to uh, remove all the bands from the from the loops afterwards after you have run it. Actually, the the most current zero length band script, you do actually get a choice now. You can be oh. just the sheets, the helices, or the loops. Oh, I see. Okay, so if you can just do it on the sheets and the helices, then uh, you can probably just use the zero length bands. I was I was extremely happy the day I realized that, and yeah, I worked without it for a long time too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyways, uh, you can do that, or you can you can do what uh what I do and just uh, add bands on each each second structure, and then you you can change the band strength to to ten, and then when you wiggle. Uh, well, the secondary structures will be will be kept in place, and the loops will move around, and the uh, and the uh, and the and the cut bands will get pretty close to each other. So I don't like to close the cut bands before I get a pretty high score. So this is a good enough score. So now you just close the cut bands. I think that was it, and of course uh, now you have to wiggle again because you have to. You want to these loops to get nice. Very okay. nice. So that's uh, that's about what I. This is sort of the the, the start. Let's see. Um, the next thing I. Did for this particular puzzle is that we have this this strand, um, and uh, okay, let me just say that actually now we know the uh, we know what the real uh, what the native structure of this protein is. So I could have sort of cheated and uh, and and made a protein to look like the native structure. I haven't done that because. I mean, then it's I wouldn't. Not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. 
I mean, I, then I would just have said, okay, why do you put things together like this? Oh, this is because this is how the native looks, and this is not, this is not this, what what happens in in when we get a new puzzle. We can't just look at the native and put things together like that. I mean, so in this case, in the native, this I, I know that this strand I think is a seed, but I but the way I've put this protein together, it can't really be a seed. So I. I have to do something with this strand, and uh, if you don't know what to do, I mean, well, then a helix is better than a loop. So I just made this 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 strand into a helix. Uh, this improved the score slightly, but it, it's not an optimal solution because it's it's not good to have sort of this stuff just sticking out. But I I, I didn't have any other idea of what to do, so I just made made a helix out of this. And just the last thing I'll open is, this is after I have run um, this, uh, uh, this uh, script, TVDL Enhanced DRV, uh, just to rebuild the loops. Uh, and um, yeah. Uh, one thing I'll, I should add here is that when I started rebuilding the loops, this this helix here, it got uh, out of shape. It started bending like a banana or something, <laughs> and uh, and some of the the some of the hydrogen bonds disappeared because that happens when the helix starts to bend. So I actually had to go back and and cut this helix out again and idealize it again and put it back in. And uh, and do some rebuilding on loops again. So this sometimes happens that you have to sort of go a step back. If 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 the if the helices or the seeds get out of shape, usually it's the helices that get out of shape. You maybe maybe have to go back and try to uh, make them ideal again and uh, and rebuild them. And uh, uh, this happened in this case. So I, I this is one step I did towards this solution. Very nice tokens. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. going to move along here to GMN, and then we do have a few question, a couple of questions for Maddie, and I'm sure that we'll have um, some for both uh, both you and GMN also. GMN, if you could unmute yourself, please. Unmuted. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All and right. I'm gonna load my screen here. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, yes, we can. Wait. All right. Yes, we can. Here we go. Good, because one thing I was going to talk about real quick, I work in low CI. I'm doing all my rebuilding at point two and for the initial start. Um, I'm also looking at exposed, and I have my sheet bonds on for view options. That's for people who don't know what, you know, the vets are going to know this, but most of you are, if you're new, you're not going to have an idea about it. Um, again, it's it's a repetition. I'm looking at. I like to look at exposed. Um, usually, I sometimes I have the side chains on. Sometimes I don't. It's going to be pretty similar to what you've seen protein structure wise, just maybe a little different approach. I don't change. I didn't change these structures here at the uh, at the on the left of my screen. I didn't bother changing those structures at all. But I did look at these and I said, okay, these two are probably going to be next to each other. There's a lot of hydrophobics there. Um, so I go in and I'm looking at what I'm going to move. I end up moving this sheet or these these segments over to here. I think I have that here. I I call it sheet step one. Sheets aligned. If it'll load, you can see that I've loaded. I've aligned these sheets. Um, and again. Uh, another thing that I, I don't worry about my score. You notice that all of us don't worry about the score. Um, it goes negative. It goes way negative. Um, I also use a different interface. I use a selection interface as opposed to the original interface, which I think um, Maddie and um, tokens were working in. That's just you know it's just preference what you get used to working in. So I have this sheet. I use bands. I can see the sheets here. I band everything together. Red doesn't scare me at this point, but if I were way up at the top and had way it towards the end, 
I would have I would be worried about the red. I'm going to take my next sheet. I I rebuild my helices later. I'm going to take this sheet over here next on the right of the helices. I'm going to move it in. So I call that sheet two aligned. That comes in. You can see I've banded it. I've got my. I can see that I have some nice strong hydrogen bonds here. Um, I'm going to go to my sheet three, which is going to be taking this one and aligning it. And boom, I've got all my sheets lined up. This is what I call a sheet wall. If you have she sheets, I like to put them in walls. I just it, it's just something I do. I did that on I think uh, 803 as well. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is um, rebuilding the big helix and what I'm going to do when I'm rebuilding helixes. I'm looking to see how as best as I can to line up the hydrophobics on one side, similar to what. Um, Tokens and Maddie have said too. So you can see I've got it rebuilt. I I don't. It's not ideal. I have this uh, side chain sticking out up here, but um, I've got most of them lined up on the bottom. So they're they're close. And I'm going to position this. When I position it, I'm looking to. I see these big. This is a tyrosine. I think this one's a phenylalanine. I believe I could be wrong. I can't remember. I'm going to look for a pocket that I can put them down in here. In it's not just pu put pulling them down, but I'm kind of looking where is there open space in here that I could kind of bury these two in in down somewhere in here. And I've put that down here where I think I put it. I've repositioned that helix, and you can see it's still all red, but I'm going to have some problem. Maybe some problem here, but when I shake it out and wiggle. Uh, it 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 should work out. Um, I do notice this tyrosine out here on the right of my screen may come back to bite me. It's an exposed sitting out here at the end. I have uh, this big hurricane, probably a phenylalanine, I think, sitting out here at the end. These may come back to haunt me later on. Having exposed hydrophobes are not a good thing in a deno or in any puzzle. So you're trying to minimize that. So um, I connect mine. What I do is I just freeze my structures where I'm going to somewhere where it's going to bend and I just pull them together. I don't band them. I just pull them together. And I'm not worried about red for the structures, the clashing. I guess that's the clashing and all. So I'm not too worried about that. But when I reconnect it, it looks like this. I move into that slide. You can see these are not ideal connections, but I it's going to work out. For me, it's going to work out at the end um, when I rebuild with uh, Timo's excellent rebuilding script. I really like that. So kudos to Timo for that one. Um, now I've got to figure out what the heck am I going to do with this and what am I going to do with this. Um, I chose not to bring this currently over the center of the uh, protein. I just kind of let it, I just kind of belt it in place as the um, helice and just kind of let it work itself into place on that. And that's on the next slide here or the next track. So it's just kind of hanging out there on the end. It's kind of worked its way into the, somewhat into the middle. It's kind of worked its way out there. Um, and this thing, you know, I, I've turned it into a helicea well, this um, this guy out here, this, this, you know, it, it, it's only got one, uh, what, one helicea marked in here. So I just turned it into a helicea. I call it the tag in. I rebuilt it and I put it in as, it just kind of, it's got that, this is not, this is not ideal here, um, but I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. This is with this tyrosine hanging out here. It's not, not looking good, but um, I haven't done any rebuild yet. I haven't done really any shaking or anything. I've just been moving things around and connecting them. And then I'll connect everything together and I'll give it a shake and wiggle. That's the next, that's the next one. And this is what I'm looking at. I've got, this is before I do my Timo rebuild, TVDL, Enhanced. I have the. I, I'm looking at my exposed. I'm going to get rid of that. So GMN, sorry. GMN. Yeah, you, I actually I want to get rid of the. I'm sorry. You have your your sheets banded. Yeah. Um, are you are you going to band or freeze anything to I, start wiggling? I don't. 
I let it wiggle as is. I'm, I'm looking at one, two, I'm looking at the yellow orbs or the yellow spheres. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, looks like eleven exposed right now. And I know this is going to haunt me out here on this loop. I've got to figure out, uh, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that one. Um, I could, what, one thing I was thinking of doing, but because these two are in the middle, is making this could have a, you could move one of these sheets, I, I, mean, I haven't done this yet, but I've thought about moving one of these sheets on the outside and having the helice extend over farther and that might cover some more. I'm not sure, I haven't really thought about that, but I've, I mean I haven't done it, I've thought about it, I just haven't done it yet. It's just just puts a little more space, might have a little more coverage on some of the exposed, although these will become exposed, but um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens when I try that one. Um, so now I'm at a point where I've got a lot of red, I've got some really ugly loops here. This is just not pretty at all, but I'm I'm a script runner. I, I Once I get the initial setup I like, I start running, I start running the scripts. And I have one where I just, I, I use Timo's um, Enhanced TVDL, and this is the screenshot after running it for, I don't know how long I ran it, but it, wor it works out. It's got a lot smoother stripe. You can see this is not bent the right way. I'm going to have to come back and fix that. Um, but you can see that this is, this is, you know, it's it's all initial. I like to work at point two because it, I think it gives it a lot more flexibility. For me, that's that's just uh, you know, it's a preference. Well, whether I would really whether it really does or not, I don't know. <laughs> but um, I would agree with you. That's what I work in too. Although yeah. I'm looking and realizing that you and I do some things differently. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and that's pretty much the structure I would be working with now in. Um, to, I'd be doing further rebuild, and I'd slowly, I'll slowly increase. That's kind of what I'm looking for. You know, how can I get the structure to look stable and happy if I were to take the bands away? Actually, I, I'm paranoid. I don't take bands away. I just um, in, unenable them or disable them. And then if I were to shake and wiggle, um, it would probably, it, it should be a stable structure now. Um, Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. See and see, um, it's going. It, it is actually. You can see it wiggling around. It's actually fairly stable. It's actually really stable. I just got to figure out what I'm going to do with it now. So, um, I don't know. I think that's that's it. Um, oh, you did want me to mention. It's it's kind of interesting. We were talking. I do have a degree in cellular molecular uh, cellular molecular biology from the University of Washington, but I don't use. I, I maybe I use more than I think, but I don't think I use. I, I look at these as puzzles. It's not, I'm not taking into effect a lot of, you know, what I've learned is, you know, exposed and all that is from working with other people, working with a team, as opposed to just really applying my science background to it. Well, it, there's no question this is the ultimate yeah. puzzle, isn't it? Which yeah, is they are. So yeah, that, 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 for so long. Yeah, that's what intrigues me is a puzzle aspect on this, is what really does intrigue me. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, Jim, and thank you so much. You're um, welcome. I'm going to start. So. With it. There is a little bit of a lag between our live and when it actually is broadcast. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, now's the time, folks, if you have some questions to get them in there. But there were a couple of questions for Maddie. Um, Maddie. I think you answered them in global, but I'd like to have them live in the video. Can you unmute yourself, Maddie? And uh, there you go. Um, okay. In in global in um, the vet room, they had asked, "Is there any reason why you close your cut points so early?" Well, sorry, it wasn't that early. The, the score was pr uh, quite high, and I think it was uh, quite stable already. Okay, so if you feel that it's stable, you feel you may as well close it and move on from there. 
Yeah, and then uh, let's uh, tidy up the, the, the script Excellent. from uh, Timo. Okay, um, and I thought there was another question there. It looks like I missed it. Okay, I'm looking over at Betts, and I'm going to ask if there are any questions now. Um, Undine, I close mine very early. I close my cut points very early. I, I tend to close mine also, but I, I, I'm seeing a very distinct difference here. Between yeah, there's no, ra yeah, there's no rationale why, why I close my cut points early. I just well, do it. But. I think it has a lot to do with whether you're working in low CI or high CI um, or, or normal. I, it seems that... Um, I know that I don't band or do anything to my loops, um, but what I do is um, I, I just wiggle. I just click on an end and wiggle, click on the other end, it ends up turning yellow and I move on from there, but I'm working in point two CI. Um, mm -hmm. I think I see a couple of questions here. Um, GMN, are you, uh, you are using the Timo DRW is a stabilizer when the score is rock bottom there. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, I and I use it. I use it at either point two or point four CI. So Usually point two. It depends upon how stable or unstable it looks. Okay. And um, let me see if there. Okay, we have Kate Fisher in here twice. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of other questions. I mean, I'm, I am sure that um, as, as everyone absorbs um, what they're looking at, th there will be a lot of questions in the days and weeks to come. Um, uh, Silver is asking about um, keeping the sheets as flat as possible. Now I know I normally freeze when I'm getting to that point. And GMN, you also freeze, or you don't freeze? I don't freeze. Okay. I don't freeze. I don't freeze them. I let them build as they are. If they need straightening out, I might work on that later. But you know, I don't always have the most technologic or technically correct um, proteins either. Sometimes, and that might be because I don't freeze. Yeah, um, I freeze. And I'm known for ugly proteins. <laughs> and that's just the way it goes. Um, let's see. And I, if everyone would unmute themselves, except maybe Kate, if it's a little bit noisy there. Um, Maddie, tokens, um, freezing versus unfreezing. You have to unmute yourselves, though, I believe. Or no, maybe uh, you are. Yeah. Uh, well, I do freeze the things, and uh, I don't know if, if, if it's the right thing, but uh, I like to have like ideal helices and ideal sheets. This is just sort of my philosophy, and uh, I don't know if it gives me a higher score or not, but that's what I like. Okay, and, and Maddie, you also froze sheets. I, I always freeze uh, secondary structs at the beginning. There's, there's plenty of time for messing up the secondary structures in the later game. Okay. Um, another question um, that we're getting is, uh, well, Fruit is asking, and I hope I can pronounce this correctly, do any of you put any weight on chirality when dealing with loops? No, I'm not a biochemist, so I'm not doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't look at it either. He might need to um, specify a bit more. Um, and one other thing. Oh, Silver was also asking that split sheet. Did you think about adding secondary structure, any of you? Oh, I mean, you did on the, the end, on the, on the little um, helix on the end. I did. I If he's talking about the sheet that split, the, that one line, I didn't close it. I didn't turn it into all to sheet, but it looked like tokens, and Mad Maddie did. If that's answering Silverberg's question, I think so. Yeah, I left I left mine 
I left it un. Yeah, I might close it later, but I or turn it into a sheet later, but I didn't myself. All right. But uh, GMN, it didn't it seem like uh, in the structure you got, it actually was part of a sheet. It wasn't the second part of the structure yeah. wasn't defined as a sheet, but it still was part of the sheet. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Tokens, I agree. I just didn't bother to do it. Yeah, uh, and so, I might, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But but the second part of the structure you made, yeah. you made it part of a sheet. Yeah, it, yeah, you're right. It is a part of the sheet, but it's I didn't turn it into a sh I didn't turn it into a sheet itself. But whereas you and Maddie did, yeah. yeah. But you're right, tokens. It is definitely a part of the sheet. When when I have something like that, I automatically throw some sheet in there because if it's if it's not, I don't like having one loop between anything, and I just very very blithely say, no, I I want it to be like this, and that's where I go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I just laugh when I see something like that. Well, it might not be, but it's going to be so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to give me trouble. Um, I think I do think that that's most of the questions. Gentlemen, is there anything that you want to ask each other? Uh, it, this is not a question, just a, a comment uh, on about rebuilding. Um, I, I usually rebuild at 0 0.3 uh, CI, uh, and uh, I guess one of the reasons I do it, I, I also use the, this is a good thing for people to be aware of, to, to use the use less precise wiggle. Uh, I rebuild at 0 0.3 and use the use less precise wiggle, and I remove the, um, I say I don't fuse, and this is basically just to make things go faster. Um, so it's it's a good thing if your computer is not super fast that uh, you can do these tricks to make things go a little bit faster. Very good. Yeah, I would I would agree, tokens. I'm not fusing at low CI that at, at all much either. I should say when I'm doing my initial rebuilding, it's just doing the um, without fusing. And you're working at point zero three, you said, or point three? Uh, well, well, thirty percent of what you say. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Point three. Excuse yeah. me, GMN. Can I ask you to stop screen sharing so we have another face here? Oh, geez. Do I have to scare you? Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. There we are. Is and that to better? Those watching. <laughs> Um, I believe that just about everybody else has a webcam. This is an unusual session in that we're working with two out of three players who, who do not have the webcam. So um, go ahead. I, I'm very sorry to have interrupted that. No, I, was, it, I think we are just talking about what CI we rebuild, we rebuild at. I, yeah. Um, you and I, you you and I are low CI, and it sounds like tokens is too. Um, I'm not sure, um, Maddie, what your CI you're rebuilding at. I'm just curious. I uh, rebuilt at uh, the, the first um, the helices at at a zero, and then uh, yeah. uh, CI zero, and uh, the loops at one. Okay. Okay. And I'm fascinated with that. I'm I'm going to be playing around with a little bit of that myself. I I seem to see that depending on how our wiggle works, if you um, rebuild seems to work extremely different now between zero, two, and then all the way up the scale. At, at every point, it seems like uh, certain times it's working better at a certain CI, and other times you could wait for a long time. You could grow much more gray hair while you were sitting there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess I should I, I should backtrack. Um, when I'm rebuilding my sheets, it's like in hand folding. I rebuild or rebuilding my helices. I rebuild at zero and then shake and wiggle it. This is like hand folding. Shake and wiggle at point two. Great. So that's kind of. So I'm re, I am rebuilding at zero, and that's a, that's the thing I like about um, Timo's DRW is that it rebuilds at zero, and then it it shoots back up to the C. To your set CI, and then it goes back and rebuilds at zero. So very good. 
Well, gentlemen, I don't see any other new questions. That that question about chirality is actually, um, I see, something that um, Susumi is going to deal with in session six. I'll be listening for that oh, one. That, um, <laughs> <laughs> hoping that I can figure out what that means, too. Excuse me. Okay. Um, GMN, tokens, mm -hmm. Maddie, thank you the three of you so very much for sharing this. This has been such a wonderful thing to look over your shoulder and see what you do. And everyone does so differently. Now we have um, six more people on tap. And it's it, this is just a fascinating day. Thanks for kicking it off. Um, Maddie, especially making that video was just extraordinary. And I will show Maddie's video in its entirety at the end of session six so that we actually have it on record and uploaded to YouTube without any um, glitches. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And for those of you who are listening, we're going to close this broadcast. It's about 10 after 3. Um, I We will start, hopefully, if we have no glitches, setting up the next one at about 3.30. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.